Tomorrow the doctor and nurses will come in here and they'll say, uh, Mr. Murray, <coughs> what are you in this bed for? There's nothing wrong with you. Go home. Four or five years of age. Train up a child in the way he should go. I have no misunderstanding of where my granddaughter and grandson are going because we teach them the word of God. Now, in the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verses, one, uh, verses 18 to 20, we have another thing that happened with the laying on of hands. At this time, Moses had been the leader of the nation of Egypt, uh, Israel for 40 years since they left the, the, uh, the, the, the um, land of bondage. And the people loved Moses, but it was time for Moses to hand the reins over to a younger man called Joshua. And God was going to take Moses home. And this is what God said to Moses. He said, And the Lord spoke and said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom the Spirit is, and lay your hands upon him. Set him before the eyes of the priests and, and, and uh, before all the congregation, and inaugurate him in their sight. And you shall give some of your authority and power and wisdom to him <coughs> um, in front of the congregation of the children of Israel, so that they may be obedient. I love this next verse. It says, So Moses did as the Lord commanded. What a great scripture. Moses did as the Lord commanded. That's one of my favourite. If God tells you to do something, don't pray about it. I, 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 I get, I think, people say to me, Oh, God spoke to me and told me to do something and I'm really praying about it. The word of God is not to be prayed about, thought about, Thank you very much. It's to be obeyed and acted out. It says, So the Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua, the son of, uh, and, took Joshua and set him before <coughs> Eli's the priest and before the congregation, and he laid his hands upon him and inaugurated him, just as the Lord had commanded by the hand of the Lord. Now in Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 it says, Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid his hands upon him. Now let me tell you, you have the anointing every one of you, to lay hands on people who are sick and see them recover, but you don't have the anointing to lay hands on people to set them out into ministry. Do you understand that? That's not your anointing. That's the anointing of the five-fold ministry. Moses had to lay, not, not somebody in the front, Moses had to lay his hands on Joshua. And what happened was Moses was full of wisdom, he was full of authority and full of power, and when Moses literally laid hands on him, that power of God, that wisdom of God that had, that had grown into Moses went through Moses' being down his arm and into Joshua. But it says some of it, not all of it. You know why? You don't become an instant success overnight. You don't become a man of maturity overnight. It grows. It grows. This is what we call... The transference of power through the laying on of hands. Every time you, you can lay hands on people for a blessing, and guess what? It is going to work. <clears throat> now let me talk to the young people over here. I don't care how old you are, you can be a success for Jesus. Even you three up the back that are slapping each other, you can be a success for Jesus. That's if you stop slapping each other. When I'm talking about laying on of hands, it doesn't mean this laying on of hands, all right? <laughs> when we went to New Guinea as missionaries, <coughs> we arrived in an area eight years after the first missionaries. Most of the people had never seen, you know, too many white people before. And <coughs> we started a school, and a Bible school. One of our girls called Kilikili, she um, got born again. We taught her the Word of God and she decided that she was going to marry a Christian and go into the ministry. They marry very young there, sometimes 13, 14, 15. <clears throat> Killy Killy fell in love with a guy, but the village sold her off to somebody else, an old fella down, down the road. They didn't even tell you. They just, you just find out from your friends. Just got you, you're getting married. You know? And she said, no, I'm not. She went back to the village. They said, you're going to marry that old fellow down the road. We've already sold you to her, to, to him. She said, no, I'm not. You know what they did? They took her. They dragged her into the village. They tied her arms, or her wrists and ankles. <clears throat> they pulled her up in a tree. They lit a fire under her. And they said, we'll burn you to death. 
unless you marry the old guy. You know what she said? Burn me. Burn me. I'm not going to marry somebody out of the body of Christ. I am going to be a preacher's wife and I, I need to marry the man that God sends to me. Well, she married, she married for you, didn't she? But the amazing thing was that one time, <clears throat> um, well, the kids used to go out there all the time preaching the gospel into the village churches and, and Susie used to always have a Wednesday uh, uh, ladies meeting on, on the mission station and they come from everywhere. If you've ever been to Eastern Highlands of Papua New Guinea, now we live 6,500 feet above sea level and we're in the valley. And you've got these mountains that go up like this. I mean, they're, 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 like, they're like this. And, and you've got a house over here and a house over there. Visitation is really difficult in that country. You can't ring them up. They don't have mobiles and telephones, you know. And so anyway, <clears throat> what happened was there was one dear old lady. She was, a, she was an old faithful and she was there every single, every single Wednesday praising the Lord and coming along to ladies' meeting. And all of a sudden, one day, she's not there. Wondering where she is. But, you know, it's hard to visit. Second Wednesday, not there. This lady had taken a stroke right down one side of her body, totally paralysed, totally paralysed, right down one side. And one Sunday night, <clears throat> the Lord came to her in a vision. And the Lord said to her, get your family to carry her outside and lay her on the dirt. Outside you've got pigs and chickens. So she indicated to the family and they didn't want to do it, but finally they carried her out. Because in this vision, she saw this young girl called Kilikili coming into the village with her Bible in her hand to preach the gospel. Now, we didn't send Kilikili to that village every week. We had about 20 villages, and the students used to rotate. But in her vision, she saw Kilikili. And she saw Kilikili come up over the, the fence, the stile, into the village with a Bible in her hand, walk up to her, reached down, grab her by the hand and said this, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. She said, I saw myself get up and walk. So she, she lay down outside and five minutes later, guess who came to town? Killy Killy. The girl that had been hanging up in the tree with a fire under her and they said, we burn you to death. And she said, no, I'm going to preach the gospel for Jesus. How old would she have been, sir? 15, 16? We had 15 and 16 year olds pioneering churches pioneering churches, building churches. <clears throat> so anyway, what happened was the old lady was healed by the power of God. The following Wednesday, she came down the mission to be there at the ladies' meeting with Susie and uh, she stood up and gave a testimony in her <coughs> native language, which we didn't understand. Uh, it's dialect and uh, everybody went ballistic. They're all praising God, crying and worshipping the Lord and Susie's standing there, Ooh, do, do, do. She couldn't understand. So afterwards, someone came in and gave her the interpretation. Susie got excited. She came down and told me. And, and I was very pleased that old lady got, got healed. But you know what? I, I was the big white missionary. I learned a big lesson that day. I called Killy Killy down to my office and I said, Killy Killy, I've just heard news about what happened to the old lady in the village. And she said, yes. And I said, we've heard that you laid hands and you got healed. Yes. And, and I said, now, Killy Killy, I want to know why you didn't come and tell us. Because we're the missionaries. We, we wanted to know these things. And, and she looked at me and she said, well, Pastor Greg, she said, you teach us in Bible school every day to go out and to pray for the sick and to heal the sick and to see blind eyes open and to raise the dead just like Jesus did. And she said, and, and, and there's a lot of our students. And she said, we're out there doing that every day. And she said, if, if every time a miracle took place, if we have to come and tell you about it, we'd be in your office lined up at the door, all trying to tell our story instead of out there praying for the sick. And I said, keep up the good work. Save face. Keep up the good work. Isn't that wonderful? Keep up the good work. See, Susie here, she's a bit embarrassing sometimes. Susie will pray for people in the shopping centre if they're sick. We were driving down from Bundaberg one time and Susie saw a truck on the side of the road with two words on it, fruit and honey. It's a shop. 